The Man with Thousand Kids is a new three-part documentary series on Netflix that brings to light the actions of a man named Jonathan Jacob who really seems to stoop to a new low to stoke his insatiable ego. After being a sperm donor for more than 15 years, Jonathan is believed to have shared his genes with an unlawfully high number of families resulting in him being the biological father to at least hundreds of children around the globe if not thousands. The Man with Thousand Kids does a great job of bringing this horrific breach of trust to attention and also spreading awareness about the need for stronger regulations in the sperm donation industry. The Man with Thousand Kids begins in the Netherlands where Suzanne and Natalie are a loving couple with an exceptionally strange story to tell. Natalie always wanted to be a mother following the traditions of all the women in her family. But this was not an easy task considering that she was in a lesbian relationship with no intention of ever getting physically intimate with a man either. Like many couples in this situation, Suzanne and Natalie also consider taking advantage of sperm donation. However, they were not in support of the rules followed by sperm banks in the Netherlands as donations were completely anonymous, meaning that recipients would not know who the biological father of the child would be. Natalie wanted to have the choice with regards to what genes her child would be getting and so the anonymity would not really work for her. Therefore, she sought help from individual donors whose contact information is often available on websites and this was when she first came across the site named Longing for a Child. Natalie and Suzanne were impressed by the long list of personal sperm donors that were available to choose from on the website with brief details about each of them mentioned as well. They first contacted a man named Leon whose description mentioned how he was a kind and sympathetic person with a job as a financial advisor at a reputed bank. But Suzanne's meeting with Leon was not positive as she recalls how the man looked extremely sketchy with descriptions like a big scar running on the back of his head making it obvious that he was not really a financial advisor. Trying her luck once more, Natalie spoke with a man named Martin who readily sent her his recent photos unlike Leon and she was almost immediately impressed. The man had beautiful long blonde hair and was supposedly a poet and teacher, clearly with a sensitive side to him. Natalie was pleasantly surprised this time around as Martin turned out to be exactly like his photos and description. Although there was a slight caveat in the sense that he mentioned that his real name was Jonathan, she was ready to look past this detail since many sperm donors prefer to hide their personal details. Very soon, it was decided that Natalie would impregnate herself with Jonathan's donated sperm and after a few attempts, she was able to get pregnant. When she asked for a little bit of clarification as to how many families Jonathan wanted to help in this manner, he stated that his desire was to help out five families and no more. And Natalie was the third woman he was helping. There could not have been a better response for her. And she and her wife were absolutely delighted to finally have their first child. But incidentally, this was the same reaction for Vanessa, a single woman who desperately wanted to become a mother, and for Nicolette, who had to resort to sperm donation, being a lesbian as well. John and Joyce had to take help of donors as well as John had already gone through an irreversible vasectomy by the time he met the love of his life and wanted to become parents with her. All four of these families or individuals had been helped by the donor named Jonathan and the numbers according to his claim of helping five families did not really add up. Some of them, like Vanessa, even took his help twice for two kids and the woman actually got directly inseminated, meaning that she got involved with him sexually. Jonathan Jacob had a significant presence on the internet as well as he ran a YouTube channel, which is still active by the way, on which he uploaded videos of his visits to various countries in Europe and America. The parents felt quite safe and secure with regards to the man they were choosing to be their donor and they mostly liked Jonathan's personality while meeting him as well. Thus, they were massively shocked when certain news made its way to the headlines in the Netherlands sometime later, which involved an unusual breach of trust. The Isala Fertility Center in the Netherlands received an anonymous tip about a donor of theirs being regularly active in other sperm banks at the same time, which was against the set rules. Even now, in the Netherlands, 
sperm banks have any donor sign a form of consent that clearly mentions that they cannot donate to any other center at the same time. When the Isala Center conducted an investigation, it was found that this flouter had indeed donated to 11 sperm banks in the country at the same time and his reproductive cells had been used in at least 102 pregnancies. In a shocking twist, for the families mentioned earlier, this donor turned out to be Jonathan, the charming young man who had blatantly lied to them about his intentions. When news of Jonathan's astounding number of biological children, irrespective of the fact that he was just the donor, spread over the continent, more shocking revelations were made. The man had donated sperm to numerous countries in Europe. Due to his excessive travelling, he also fathered kids in countries like Mexico, South Africa and Kenya. In many of the other countries like Australia, Jonathan was donating through global donation centres like Cyros International, leaving samples in Denmark which were then transferred to various parts of the world. The very visual effect of it was faced by the likes of Natalie and Nicolette who were constantly worried by the fact that their kids might have step siblings in their vicinity without anyone's knowledge. The reason behind the various restrictions placed around sperm donation is simply to ascertain that too many people in a close vicinity do not have children from the same donor, which would lead to further complications. Firstly, in the case of donations that are unaccounted for, it is very difficult to get the exact number of families that have been helped, which is pertinent problem in this particular case as well. While Jonathan's theoretical number of children can be well over 1,000, even touching a figure of 3,000, various donation centers like Cyros and the man himself claim that the number is much less. In such a scenario, not all children of donation might even know about their special status and might get romantically involved with other children of donation in their respective lives. If both of these individuals are unknowingly children of the same donor, then they share the same genetic structure, at least to some degree. Therefore, when they further reproduce with each other, there is an immense risk of health complications as it is technically a form of inbreeding. Apart from the physical repercussions of it, discovering that they are in a semi-incestuous relationship is mentally devastating for individuals as well. The matter is further complicated by the presence of what the man with thousand kids refers to as the Luke and Leah effect. Studies in psychology have noticed that when siblings or cousins grow up separate from each other without the knowledge of the other's existence, they tend to get attracted to one another after their first meeting due to the similarities that they share. It is also death sense. As being the father of so many children around the world, Jonathan cannot give time to each and every children whose parents want them to have a healthy relationship with him, biological father. Now, the reason for the restrictions is to ensure that the donor can spend quality time with the children once they are of age and if their parents are willing to allow such a bond. Therefore, Jonathan's actions were harmful in more than just one way, with the biological implications of inbreeding being the most concerning threat. When mothers from different parts of the world found out that they had been lied to and duped by the sperm donor, they came together to form a Facebook group and think of ways to bring the man to justice. This was also when they got acquainted with Eve Wiley, a fertility fraud activist from the USA who massively helped them in their endeavors. The first step was to name and shame Jonathan, as well as ensure that other women would not fall into his trap since Dutch laws prevented earlier reports from mentioning his name. The first success for the victims was when Jonathan's name and his horrific acts were written about in a New York Times article and more concerning secrets were gradually revealed. Eventually, an official investigation against Jonathan Mayer was conducted which led to a court case as well. But the first hearing was incidentally postponed since the accused was travelling to Kenya for some business purposes. This is when the victims first questioned about how Jonathan was being able to travel across the world without a stable job, especially since individual sperm donations did not involve any monetary payment. As an investigation was launched into the matter, a whistleblower came forward to reveal more about the 
longing for a child website where he had worked for a little time. This whistleblower appears in The Man with Thousand Kids as well as he reveals that the website was actually run by only a handful of men who pretended to be various other characters and Jonathan was one of the co-members. Leon, the man whom Natalie had initially met, was part of this horrific conspiracy which intended to impregnate as many women in the world as they could and the likes of Jonathan and Leon even kept a score between themselves as if it were just a cruel and twisted game. Although it could never be proved, Jonathan was also seemingly involved with a notorious sperm donation racket in Kenya which essentially sells the sperm of white Caucasian men to the highest bidder on the African continent. When approached by the documentary team for comments, the Kenya Group organization stated that they were just a platform where interested donors and receivers could meet. They also denied any business ties with Jonathan and rejected the claims of an illegal racket being run on the continent. While the exact intentions of Jonathan and some other serial donors are not known, their actions clearly stem from absolute disregard for other humans and desperate parents who seek the help of sperm donation. The man's narcissistic qualities and his desire to influence people with made-up philosophies are also easily seen through the videos on his YouTube channel, where he still defends his actions to this day. In some sense, he also probably wants to create a cult of followers with his biological children all over the world and the associated possibilities are absolutely horrific. Fueled by a terrible inflated male ego which is dangerous to people around and by a desire for attention, the likes of Jonathan Mayer go about believing that they can dominate over the whole world with their wild actions like serial donating. Towards the end of The Man with Thousand Kids, the court trial that took place in 2023 is also discussed. When confronted by the judge, Jonathan claimed that he saw nothing wrong with his actions and his solution to avoid any possibility of inbreeding was to have his biological children all have some sign on their social media that would mention how they were all products of him, the world as well as the judges, were absolutely shocked by the man's call to basically brand children just like cattle in order to avoid any confusion. Ultimately, the judge ruled in the favour of the victims and Jonathan was banned from donating his sperm anymore with a fine of 100,000 euros to be charged if he flouted the rule. While this has been a success, the man with 1,000 kids puts emphasis on the need for stricter laws starting with a shared database of donors that can be accessed by donation centers all around the globe. Jonathan is currently a free man who continues to defend himself in his videos and other TV programs. In a recent interview, he stated that the Netflix series intentionally defames his character by focusing on the few families who have complaints against him instead of showing the many who feel genuinely held by his actions. According to him, the possibility that a parent might not want their child to know that they have been born from donated sperm is a bad dated thought. Ultimately, the need for more organized and strict rules regarding donations needs to be put in place, especially in order to counter the disgusting practices of people like Jonathan. Thank you for watching this video. Do share your thoughts in the comments section about your experience of watching The Man with Thousand Kids on Netflix. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema and series. See you at the next one and for the time being, goodbye and take care.